Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, if you, I mean, I so I haven't uh, so we're gonna watch the PlayStation State of Play here, and I'm broadcasting this live. But this is not being this is not the live showing. It's it, it happened was it like four hours ago? Uh, but I don't know anything about it, so it's as good as new to me. And if you're watching on YouTube, then it, it doesn't matter, does it? It's just the same, right? Because you're watching it after the fact anyway. Right? I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I thought this would be fun. Maybe I was wrong. Jesus. Get away from me. God. Um, we're going to see some video games here. I, I, you know, that, that, uh, what, that Soul Reaver remake is going to be here. Probably that Horizon remaster. Um, I don't, you know, whatever, whatever else. What the fuck else is Sony? You know, a bunch of third party stuff, right? I bet, I bet that they have a trailer for the Astrobot, like, patch. That seems like something they would do. They'd be like, hey, we're the speedrun thing we talked about doing. Here's a, here's a look at that. I bet they do that. Um, and, uh, I, you know, and, and whatever else, I, I don't. I don't actually know. This is kind of coming, you know, not that far before the you know, Tokyo Game Show, and uh, you know, so there, there could, you know, is Death Stranding two in this thing? I suppose that's possible, but they've got their own event at TGS that they probably wouldn't put this trailer in here if they were going to do their own thing in Tokyo. So, uh, but but Sony is publishing that, so I suppose it's, I suppose it's possible. I'm going to say unlikely for a Death Stranding 2. Um, let's watch this thing. Oh, right. We can skip past all this stuff. Well, I can figure out the audio and... Yeah. Astro Boy Remastered. Sure. Sure. You know, when everyone complained about uh, Nintendo remastering a bunch of Wii U games for the Switch... You could at least, like, shrug and go, yeah, but no one fucking bought a Wii U. When Sony remasters PS4 games, you're like, what? What? Uh, what? Oh. Okay. Um, all right, we don't have to wait this eight minutes. We can go, okay, yeah. This is great. This is great not having to wait. This is awesome. You should do this all the time. I've got a Red Bull here. It's a little one, so you can... It's a nighttime Red Bull, you know? It's the little can. It's like your bedtime Red Bull. Like, ah, a little nightcap. Before we head off to Betty Bye. Mm-hmm. All right, mature content. That's why I'm here. I'm a mature gamer. Which means I only like it when the ladies are hot. They already got a new logo build based around this, huh? I wonder if they go with this on anything else. Oh, sure. Hi. Yeah, okay. Yeah, look at that. The Helldivers guys. Okay, so yeah, they are... I assume this is going to have something new in it and not just, um, yeah. I've not yet finished this game, so I don't know, is, are these going to be, are these new levels? No, these, okay, no, I remember some of these levels, okay. The speedrun stuff was fun in the in the previous game. So um So that's that's it's it's weird that this didn't launch with this them going, "Hey, we made even more like robots from game franchises." I'm not, you know, there's so many of those and there's there's already so many good ones. 
Hi everyone, I'm Nicolas Dusset, the studio head at Team Asobi. We couldn't be happier with the reception to Astrobot and to see how much joy Astro is bringing to homes all around the world. On behalf of Team Asobi, thank you so much. Now, we still have a few surprises up our sleeves. Today's trailer was a sneak peek at the DLC we we'll release later this year at no additional cost. We'll have more to share soon. But for now, let's enjoy the state of play. Get this little fucker off me. Listen to me, burnt one. If you aren't turning to walk the midnight walk, you better be sure to keep your spark safe and burning. Mm-hmm, okay, yeah. While well, I was in the black, I had a dream. There was a monster in the woods. And on Handcrafted in clay, it's like an entire game of Goro from Mortal Kombat 1. I mean the first, and by that I mean the first Mortal Kombat. They should put Goro in this game, much like all the Astrobot had PlayStation guys are in there. Goro should be in this. Thank you. Also, Ichibod Clay and Bad Mr. Frosty and Blue Suede Goo. And so it was that the burnt one and a small flame took a wander down the midnight walk. <laughs> the burnt one, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you ever just get, you ever just get burnt, bro? Bro, no, let me. Said his brain was infected Mother by devils. Said monsters didn't exist. I thought they lived under my bed. We were both wrong. They lived inside our heads. Oh, geez. Creepy back bent guy with no face. Man, this day's gone remaster is fucked. It's got a nice look to it. <laughs> yeah. This is a remac remaster of the Dennis Hopper game. Hell is back. just some guy and now I got a sword and kind of tactical stuff and a drone I'm not the souls game protagonist you're used to no it's not a snow oh Nacon cool they published uh, test drive unlimited solar crown quality product my story is a tale of rules rewritten by nuclear fire Oh, hey, Serda! Have you seen Yana? Something happened. She's in no state to be wandering out in the metro alone. I need to go after her. They the had already said they were doing a metro VR thing, right? Ritual. Please, just let Yana be all right. What is that? I keep hearing other voices on the radio. You said there were people there. <laughs> Did you not hear any of that? Yana, is that you? The one, the one, the one. I'm seeing things. Hearing things. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Yeah, I can't even see my arms anymore. It's really fucked up. The thing we fear. To prevent something worse. But in the mirror, I've got arms. It's scary. 
it's really scary. That's out pretty soon. Stupid idiots fighting and such yet boats you have been granted another chance in Aurora. Really cool. It must be the will of your beloved mother goddess. However, I still have no trust in your kind. That's cool, man. I don't really trust humans anymore either. It's not, you know. I get it. I get it, dude. Cacao games. It's got a real like carbon neutral games, prebiotic games. Oh, yeah. Strike while the iron is legal, I guess, right? I mean, whatever. This will get figured out. They'll. They'll pay some money and take out some stuff and go, ah, geez. I'm sure they've added stuff to this game. I, I, did, I have not played it since it launched. And like, I, I look at this and go, yeah, that's not like any of the stuff that I saw when I was playing it, but also, I don't know. Oh, out today. Fuck it. Quick, get it out there, dog. Thanks to Pocket Pair for that new look at Pal World, an incredible open world survival game that's launching today on the PlayStation 5 console. We have a few more games with breaking news today, starting with the return of two beloved RPGs from the original PlayStation. Your dreams, magical oh, yeah? All things are real unless you dream they're not in your dreams. Do we get like a, a book written by Victor Ireland with this? As we get like, you know, My Life in Games by Vic Ireland. Like, wait, what kind of... The Silver Star Story Complete and Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete with updated visuals, widescreen mode, and more. Instantly we see it, the time to grow and be it when everything is pinned on. I assume this is going to be like a new localization, right? Because wasn't collection comes to PS5 and PS4 in spring. Didn't the localization job they did? Two updates on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge. First, the Radical Reptiles DLC, which adds Mondo Gecko and Mona Lisa as playable characters. The Mondo Gecko. And no extra cost. A remixed in-game soundtrack featuring some amazing guest composers. Both of these updates arrive later today. Okay. morning I, lo I, I loaded up a Sega stream that they were doing about Sonic the Hedgehog and they showed Shadow yes, dressed up like fucking right. Batman. Keanu Reeves is joining Sonic X Shadow Generations as part of the upcoming Sonic oh. the Hedgehog 3 movie pack. Sure. 
This update is inspired by scenes from the Sonic the Hedgehog 3 movie uh, and arrives uh, December 12th. Uh, 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 the Sonic uh, the Hedgehog 3 movie pack is included in the digital deluxe edition, great. which lets you play the game three days ahead of its October 25th release date. Great. I wonder if his Shadow the Hedgehog will be better than his Johnny whatever the Hello, fuck. State of Play. I'm Sakaguchi, uh, producer of Fantasia Neo Dimension. Oh, right. Uh, yes, they're, they're finally bringing Osaka, this to platforms Fantasia that people play Dimension. games on. Uh, yeah, that's cool. This this game always seemed Suske. fucking rad, but no one played it because it was on phones. Uh, Final Fantasy series de tomoni ayun de kita uemasu san desu. PlayStation 5 ni te 2024 nen 12 gatsu 5 ka hatsubai. Eh dou ka minasan ni. I'll be curious to see what people think of this, you know, when they when they get more of a handle on it cuz you know like the people who took the plunge to play it when it was on, I guess, like Apple Arcade or whatever. I feel like the word there was like, this game seems neat. I just wish I wasn't playing it on a fucking phone. Wait. Did they just say Dragon Age was Halloween of this year? Gotten word from the wardens. Have they found Gilanane? God, I guess the year's almost over, isn't it? I was like, wait, shit. One of her blighted dragons. Fucking weird, man. I thought for sure when they started talking about it earlier this year again that it was a 25 game. That's cool. I have heard good things. As much as people were not into the reveal that they, the re reveal, I guess they did. Um, it seems like people who have played it have had very nice things to say about it. It'd be nice for my wife to get a win here and actually get a game out that is actually good, that she wants to play. Everyone, Not that she'll have time to play. Get ready. <laughs> but. Wardens. Ready, ballistas. Wait for it. Come on. Come on! Oh shit! It's the, it's the age of, I didn't. I thought we were done with this whole age, but no. Hit the wings. There are dragons, man. Flank on the walls. This is fucked up. Now, this is something I look at and go like, mm, I don't know if I uh, believe that it'll run like this on a PlayStation 5. You know what I mean? A little too smooth, area a little too large. There's just something about it that I just look at and go like, mm -hmm. maybe if you spent another $700. Or bought a PC. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they are saying it's Steam Deck verified, so obviously they're targeting a wide range of hardware. Um, and, you know, yeah, if we, if we really want to pick it apart, there's stuff in the background that looks a little low res, and, you know, a little uh, low detail, I guess, but I don't know. I guess I'm just not used to games like this, you know, Western developed third person, whatever, whatever's. I guess I'm just not used to them running it because consistent frame rates, they just never seem to. Second dragon. Second dragon. It's a funny thing to have to yell like, oh shit. Second dragon. Not there's another one. We've got to work out a protocol for what happens when we're fighting a dragon and another one shows up. We need something we yell 
that no one will mistake for something else. What about second dragon? Okay, I love it. First one, Billy. Second one, Jimmy. Third dragon. Fuck. It's bad. The two dragons, then a dragon lady. You have a separate call out for dragon lady? This isn't the Bureau's first time in Bright Falls. Oh, word? The FBC's research department set up a facility. The lake house. If I had any clue what was waiting for us in there, I would have just kept on driving. Second dragon. Just some weird demon guy yelling the word hatred. You know, you know. You know how devil worshippers are doing. They're always out in the woods yelling about hate and stuff. Get Ricky the Acid the King. This is out. This um this came out on Quest, I think, last week. <laughs> the weird switch between uh, 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 was pretty good. This could be cool. I don't know. The the you know, the idea of them. I like the concept of them kind of going, hey, yeah, we did that VR thing before. It was not a good, I mean, it was like a, it was a gimmicky, like, yeah, it was not great. We're going to make a real thing. And then this trailer just being some of the dumbest shit, like guy with two syringes sticking out of his head. I want to see that Bond game, though. I want to see what they're doing next. With Kane and my brethren, until I had the honor of surpassing my lord for my transgression. Now that's a fucking kind of reward. Two thousands era looking fucking character right there, buddy. The fate of this world. Big weird feet. In an instant. This is one of the forms from Alter Echo. What the fuck am I looking at here? Yeah, man. I, you know, like I was saying on the podcast, it's it's great that they're doing this. I was not prepared for Um, but you know, I, I, this should be a remake. Like, this should be something that they're doing full remakes of because it's been long enough and, and all that. This shouldn't be like, hey, Aspire is doing the thing where you can hit a button and toggle between old graphics and new graphics. And you're like, yeah, that's cool, man. Like, I, you know. Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 1 and 2 Remastered arrives December 10th. Celebrating the 25th anniversary. But whatever, it's it's cool that they're doing release. anything with this franchise at all, right? You sure we can't just do the same? Games from the original PlayStation era also inspired Fear the Spotlight from Blumhouse Games. It brings atmospheric polygonal scares to PS5 and PS4. I love atmospheric polygonal scares. If you are doing atmospheric sprite-based scares, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck away from me, you sick fucks. Sprite-based scares in this day and age? So 
be. No, thank you. At last, we've returned to our ancestral land, a gas bomb. Build villages and nurture vast ecosystems in Towers of Agazba. This Y'all garden world includes unique creatures, a peculiar cast of characters, part of Fark. and also that guy talking crazy. other players to visit your island. Towers of Agazba launches into early access this November. Has Sony had an early access? Up next, Wait. Epic Games brings a split screen mode to Lego Fortnite. Has there been an early access concept on PSN? This I know, obviously, Xbox has had game preview for a long time. Build villages together while playing on the same. But I cannot think PS4. of another case of something being directly referred to as early access on PlayStation. I'm sure. I'm sure. Edition DualSense wireless controller arrives later this year with pre-orders starting October 3rd. Smite Visit 2 was early. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Controller only, no Fortnite it's content included was a good thing to say there origins. on the bottom and of the screen to prevent right, people from hoarding skin. those things and going like, ah, we're going to get the skins. Guardian of peace, you have crossed paths with men who may one day bring about order. Until then, oh, you must man. adapt to the chaos and find a way to survive. So Is it mash the square button for 20 minutes? Is that how we find a way to survive? I'm pretty sure I can do that. You claim to strive for justice, but have no way to achieve it. Tearing down the system without providing an alternative is mere wanton destruction. Yeah, we gotta smash the system, man. The die has been cast. All that remains to see this through. Some sort of rebellion of some sort? What are we doing? You know, good on them for continuing to make this fucking thing over and over again. And in every time they make it, it looks a little bit better, and they put 40 more fucking guys on the screen, and it's hilarious that they're calling a game Dynasty Warriors Origins. A franchise that has been fucking retelling the same chunk of history over and over again. Now they're like, it's it's origins. Like I'm sorry, the first the origins of this franchise is there was a fighting game. Capcom presents. So, Captain, what's your team been getting up to? Pussy. Well, wait, no, sorry. It's getting late. Some of the other units from the expedition, <laughs> mine included. <sighs> This forest is amazing. My fur isn't built for this kind of weather. The stream gets blue after dark, as opposed to the squeaky clean morning stream. Um, yeah, this game still looks good. This is its territory, and we're intruders. All right, that's done. That fish coming right at you. Yeah, that's cool. I don't, you know, like, I, I, I don't necessarily need the cats in this franchise, you know? They're cool, whatever, but like, I don't, the like lighthearted parts of Monster Hunter, I'm, I'm never really, you know, except for the cooking. 
If we want to consider the cooking to be a light-hearted part of Monster Hunter, I do need that. But, yeah, they don't need to talk. They don't need a, a front page roll. I don't need to, yeah. The white wraith. I don't need to dress up a fucking cat. Get a bunch of cat armor. Investigation. What is that thing? An extinct species. You're a hunter. You've got a weapon, and you do nothing. Give it to me, and I'll. Not that far off. I don't I don't think that looks good. I'm sorry. I don't think the pre-order armor looks interesting. I don't I don't mean to be a jerk about it. Just like hey. Global launch, so any of the events that they do will just be, you know, synced up. Uh, and it's on all platforms that day too, right? It's not... The COP, the Capcom Online Program. Look at those chompers! Okay, trail spots aren't cheap, so let's get started. A hunter with a mysterious past and her uh, very heroic friends. Are all that stands in the way I'm not real I, I I think that you know obviously you know I think I've, I've spoken a lot about AI and, and modern modern AI stuff and how much it a lot of it really sucks and this is a shitty thing to say but music like this I don't know what that is that I feel like if AI was gonna get good at anything it would be making music that sounds exactly like this that kind of like loosely happy like hey buddy it's a trailer for a movie or a video game or a, we're just here at this fucking upbeat thing hi everyone i'm kristen zatani we are so excited for everyone to get their hands on lego horizon adventures when it launches on november 14th and aloy has more good news on the horizon does she Aloy's original adventure, Horizon Zero Dawn, is being remastered for PS5 and PC by Gorilla and Nixes. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered includes more than 10 hours of re-recorded conversation mocap and countless graphical improvements that bring the game to the same visual fidelity as Horizon Forbidden West. Okay. It's a good game. It was, it was a good game before. I, you know, I don't... You don't... This new version of I guess. Zero Dawn I, I, will arrive October 31st, and anyone who owns the original PS4 version of the game will be able to upgrade to the new PS5 version for $9.99. Okay, Visit okay. PlayStation Blog for more details and watch the full trailer to see. What about all PC new people? To what do they just get it? Does the old version go away? New content. Do you is get on to install way. both on PC? What's happening on PC? A new photo mode lets players set up the perfect picture with your choice of poses, expressions, and filters. But no, hang on. I, I need to stop for a sec. Like, what? PC can upgrade as well? What do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? It's a $10 upgrade on PC as well? Man, fuck off. Come on. You're shitting me. I got Steam open. I'm going to go look at this real quick before we get back to this. This can't. 
All right. Uh, I'm going to go look at uh, what, what's it called here? Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition. Okay, yeah, there's no no mention of it on the Steam page right now. But they are just selling this thing for 50 bucks. I you know, Horizon Zero Dawn is a good game. I think like story-wise, it is I think better than uh better than Forbidden West just in terms of just like it's the first one, it's establishing the character, it's you know, it's just got meteor more interesting fucking things going on in it um, than the than the sequel did, but and, and it's a cool game. Like, were pe was there just a team sitting idle that they were just like, hey, what are you um, what are you guys doing over here? I'm like, I don't know, man. We're hanging out, waiting to port something. We're the port. We're the port crew. We gotta. Got just here, ready to port whatever you got. And if you got any games you want us to port, we can port them. Great. We'll come up with something. Hey, we all got together and had a hundred hours worth of meetings, and we decided it would be cool if you did a remake of Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm like, what? We already ported that to PC. You realize, like, you, okay. So not kill zone not no you don't want to do no nothing okay yeah all right i guess we'll just do that then i i don't i just don't understand like what are they like there's already you can already play this game on a playstation 5 it's not the you know it's not a native playstation 5 app right but they didn't release a didn't they already do this what the fuck what is, what is happening where am I? Didn't Horizon Zero Dawn already come out on the goddamn PlayStation Five? Or they did? They did a, a they they patched it. They patched the PS4 version to make it run better on PS5. Is what they did. That's what it was. It was like an update to make the PS4 version like uncapped or whatever on a PS5. Um. Yeah, ten dollars on for existing owners. It's ten dollars. For both PS5 and on and on Steam. Man, I you know. Sure. I don't. What the fuck is going on over there? That this is the thing that that they are like. Hey, this is what we're gonna spend time on. Like what? I, I just I don't get it, man. But I guess you know, like if there if there was a TV show or something like that, I would say, well, you know, it's it makes sense for them to have the 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 full two game franchise on the same platform because people who watched horizon on hbo are gonna want to see this or or whatever but yeah then the, the show didn't happen or you know the show's you know like i could see something like that um making sense or, or leading to them doing something like this right where it's like oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna remaster this version of the game for ps5 because We'll have all these new fans that saw it on television. You know, we want to capitalize better on this than we did with Last of Us. You know, to be faster, a little quicker on the draw. You know, like whatever. <clears throat> what they did with the Last of Us makes sense in the context of there being a TV show. And hey, you know, we're, we want to capitalize on new fans. I can't really fault them too much for the stuff they did with that. Even if like on its face, you look at it and go like, this is ridiculous. What the fuck are you doing? Like when you include the external information of new fans from TV. You go like, okay, I guess. <clears throat> it's just very funny to have like in the middle of all of this talk about like, man, Astrobot really reminds you of the Sony that used to exist and all oh, these great games they used to make and everything. And 
Uh, it's so cool that they used to be so inventive and make all this stuff. And it's, uh, they don't make bad games now, but you know, there was just something, there was a different vibe to it. And, and then they're like, Hey man, here's a remaster of this thing. That's not that old. And, uh, we've already released it on PC even. So it's just kind of a update there. And it's like, here's, yeah, I don't hear here. here uh, we've taken one of our popular third person action adventure games and made it look somewhat better for you like that that's what they're doing that's the thing the the other thing they're investing time in you know if conquered had been good maybe it would maybe the conversation would be a little bit different cuz you would have some multiplayer game out there that didn't feel like everything else that they were making but eh. And Stellar Blade's original soundtrack featuring over 180 songs. They're getting sued for Stellar Blade, too. On select streaming services starting today. First Pal World, now this. But uh, there's something all. else named Stellar Blade. Uh, is it a movie or a, there was a studio or something but yes there's some lawsuit over specifically over the name stellar Sci blade worlds collide in the stellar blade and near automata collaboration oh yeah to stellar blade later this year oh man don't layer near wow, onto things to try to get me to care about it it's not gonna work first you're so smartened up wwe 2k24 dead space and wwe literature club plus these will be available to all PlayStation Plus members starting October 1st. Meanwhile, our library of PlayStation Classics continues to grow, with two more fan favorites from the original PlayStation arriving later this year, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane and Capcom's Dino Crisis. Sure. Naughty Dog fans yeah. know September 26th is the Last of Us Day, and we're celebrating by is adding it? the critically acclaimed okay. PS5 hit, The Last of Us Part 1, to the PlayStation Plus game catalog this Thursday. Last of Us Day? What? Is this something we need to celebrate? Ah, the, the day that the spores killed us all. Like, when they say November 7th is Mass Effect Day, I go like, well, that sucks, but okay, sure. I get your little marketing thing. I, someone in chat says, you like Mass Effect. Like, do I? Do I? I sure think that their fucking marketing thing of like, it's in seven days sure fucking sucks shit. But okay. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Cerny. We recently I'm done with your ears. You can have them back the now. Five family, now I want PS5 your toes. Pro, alongside several games showcasing the superior frame rates and improved graphics that the new console makes possible. With PS5 Pro, developers have access to three key improvements. An upgraded GPU, advanced ray tracing, and AI-driven upscaling that combine to bring developers closer to realizing their unique vision. We're excited for players to get their hands on PlayStation 5 Pro when it launches this November. But in the meantime, here's a look at some of the games that are being enhanced for the new console, including a few titles that we're revealing for the very first time today. Okay. Jedi Survivor would probably benefit from some more power. Though, the PC version of that game has never quite run right.
it is such an unserious montage that they are doing. There's like, we're putting in a bunch of different clips of the same games over and over again. And here's some more of this. And we're just going to do these fucking super fast cuts on them. But also we're telling you about all the, the graphics are really going to be improved. I got to pause it again. Like really improving the, you know, the, they're going to take advantage of the advanced ray tracing, the more GPU power that we've got. And you know, the, the things that we're bringing to the PlayStation five pro. And now here's a video montage that shows off none of that or, or points or gives you zero pointers about what to look at on this other than like, I don't know, that FN 24, the light hit that car. Was that ray trace lighting or no? Was that no? It wasn't. Was it? I don't. Okay. I don't, you know, obviously you can't like stop your entire trailer presentation and go like, all right, look, motherfuckers, it's time to get serious about A and B testing. Like, we're here's the old one. Here's the fucking new one. Look at it. Um, but maybe it's not a favorable comparison, or or maybe it's not a comparison that will sway people, right? It's something that you either know you need this or you don't. Because you feel it in your soul. Not because you're like, I need to ray traced. Well, I saw that Gran Turismo looked a little bit better. You know, like, no, it, it, you're not. You're not spending this kind of money like in a sane fashion because you're like, well, the the supported game list. And I look at this and well, I'm, I haven't finished Alan Wake 2 yet. So I want to see looking at this and. Um, and so we'll, I'll play through the rest of it this way. And, you know, well, you know, it's not something that you're, you're approaching logically. It's something you're getting because you, you just, you're the type of fucking person who needs that shit. I get it. I am a type of person, maybe not in this specific case, but I am the type of person who sometimes goes, man, I need that shit. I need that high end shit. I don't want to think. I don't want to think like, oh, I wonder if this could look better. I just want to know like, yeah, I got the best thing that they fucking make. Does it look great? I, you know, yeah, could it look better? Sure. But this is it. It's not a purchase you're approaching logically. Um, especially before it's out. After it's out, when, you know, when more people have done editorial coverage and and really broken it down and going like, well, if you look at this here and look at this here, you can see the difference. Then maybe you go like, okay, this seems like actually that it matters or it, it matters to me, you know? And then that's when you can make that individual call as to whether or not this is something that will benefit you as a player. But this is not a, it's, it's just not a purchase you make logically. It's a purchase you go like, fuck yes. They're making a more powerful PlayStation 5. I'm buying the shit out of that shit. And you're psyched about it. You're like, hell yeah. 700, fuck it, man. Yeah, I need the best. And I'm willing to pay. You know, like that's, that's the, the, the curse of the early adopter, right? And there are enough of us still out there that they can launch this. And it'll, it'll sell to the people who are in that exact market segment. And they'll play, I don't know, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Maybe they're still playing Gran Turismo 7. Like, there were games on that list that were, you know, games that you could theoretically play for hundreds and hundreds of hours. Like, I finished Alan Wake 2. I don't give a shit what they're doing to it other than adding DLC because I'll want to play that as well. But the idea of like, hey, man, we're going to make Alan Wake 2 look better. You're like, cool, fuck you. You guys are dicks for doing that because I already played it. And I'm not going to play it again. It's a story-driven game. We're done. Um... But hey, and Air F in the chat says Gran Turismo 7 already looks great on a regular PS5. I agree. But what if the lighting was, you know, what, what it, 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 especially driving games, man. They could always look a little better. There's always some additional effect you could be turning on. There's always a little bit more ray tracing. There's always a little bit more like, oh, well, if we did some super sampling and, and you know, we could uh, render this. And, and bust it back down and or render it low and render it, you know, AI it up higher to look, you know, more performant, whatever it is you're doing. Um, you know, 
I just hope that they, you know, if if the PlayStation 5 Pro was coming out and they said, by the way, if you're playing Gran Turismo 7 on a PS5 Pro, we will add the song Dogs Turismo, Snoop Dogg's classic jam, Dogs Turismo, to your copy of GT7. I'd be like, well, okay, now we're talking tangible benefits. Now we're going, now, okay, now you're, you're selling me on, the, now, okay, yes, now I understand why we need this. We are beyond the edge of Japan. People come north to disappear. Okay. But you... You... are hunting. Oh shit, it's a werewolf. Huh. And now... Every ronin here is after you. Still think you're the hunter. Dzam, somebody got fucked up. This is... Is this a fucking full-on, like, ghost of Tsushima? Yeah, fuck. Holy shit. Huh. Sure. Yep. That was a good game. They should make more of them. And they're gonna. I do like the style of this trailer a lot too. This is nice. This is. What up, dog? And then that dog morphs into Snoop Dogg, and then Dogs Turismo starts playing. Listen to me, man. I would buy a PlayStation Pro if every song had... Uh, every game gets upgraded with a copy of Dogs Turismo on the soundtrack. Cool. Yeah, fucking yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. third game is just going to be like Ghost of St. Louis, Missouri. So they kind of just brought one game, huh? PlayStation and their studios. They're just like, oh yeah, we got it here. Yeah. Let's announce this. Okay. Some good looking third party stuff there for sure, too. I don't, you know, like whatever, man. Like, there's some decent looking games that they showed. Um, you know, a lot of that'll be multi platform, of course. It always is. Um, what someone, okay, someone is, is bloodborne spiraling in the chat here. Everyone's always is, right? Zerolith says, if I were head honcho over at Sony, I would have taken the $400 million to, used to make Conquered 
and instead took it over to From Software and said to them, here you go, make a 60 frames per second Bloodborne remaster for us to drop along with the PS5 Pro release, but they don't know what they're doing over there. I'm going to assume you're kind of joking, but like, no. Bloodborne is my favorite one of those. It's a great game. Um, Bloodborne is not a massive sales success. And Bloodborne is something that Sony doesn't own wholly or, or doesn't control wholly. Or, you know, they need, they, you know, they would need to get from software involved. They need to work with an external studio. And I, so, you know, the, to, to turn your joke post into an actual point here. A big part of the reason why Bloodborne never happens is because Sony would have to split a bunch of that money with someone who isn't Sony. You know? When Sony invests in Concord, when they buy the studio, it's because they're like, when this game is a smash hit, we're going to make all the money from it. We own and operate this thing. And obviously that was a huge mistake on their part. But part of the reason I think why you don't really see Bloodborne or, or you know, when, when, you, when you do see Bloodborne, because I do think you will eventually, um, it's going to be something that's like, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it'll be a big enough thing. It'll be far enough away. I, I expect that eventually they, they do the, um, the Demon Souls type of thing with it, right? And do that kind of remake, right? I, I would assume that would be the, that would be the move is to, to not just go, here it is on, you know, here it is running 60 frames a second. It would be to fucking remake it. Um, but even then, it's, you know, like, they did that Demon's Souls thing because it was something they could launch alongside a console. But that was another situation where Demon's Souls, it's why Dark Souls had to exist, right? Is because... Namco was publishing and Sony controlled the rights to the name Demon Souls. Otherwise, there probably wouldn't have been a Dark Souls. There we would have just gotten Demon Souls 2 and Demon Souls 3 and whatever and 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 so on down the line. And so Bloodborne is another one of those kind of caught in a similar uh trap. Um where From Software doesn't control it fully. And uh and, and Sony's looking at opportunity cost and Sony's probably looking at, you know, hey, how much money would it cost to do this and how much money we would, would we have to give up to from in order to make this happen? And is that worth it? Is that the thing we should be chasing? And I have to imagine that they probably run the analysis on that over and over again. And every time they come back and go, nah, not yet. Like sales projections are probably never quite what they want. They can market it better now. That genre and that developer obviously has has come a long way even since Bloodborne was released. But um, I don't think a remake of Bloodborne ever sells the number of copies that Elden Ring did. I don't. I don't think that you know. I just don't think that they are able to pull it. Um, to, to pull those kind of sales, especially because it would not be on other platforms. So. But even matched up to just the Sony sales of Elden Ring or whatever, I, I don't think that the, that a Bloodborne remake would hit those numbers. Um, and so I just kind of look at it and go like, yeah, dude, like, like I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are looking at that and they're just going, this is not the move for us business-wise. Like, this is not the thing that makes sense for us right now. And eventually enough time passes and enough things happen that... There's probably some line on a chart somewhere that when these two lines intersect, the Bloodborne thing happens. And if it happens down here on the chart, it's a fucking remaster. But if it happens up here on the chart, it's a remake, you know? And I, I but I do think it's something that does happen eventually. But I also don't think it's something that happens uh, this generation. Because it would have happened by now. Um, 
Um, and it's hard to reconcile that sometimes with a company that is that simultaneously is also saying, yeah, we're going to remaster the first Horizon game. Thing is, is I bet that that's a better business move. I bet that that's probably a much lighter lift to do tech wise because the game is already on PC. I mean, obviously they're going to go, they talked all about their new mocap and you know, they did all this new conversation mocap and everything else. And I'm sure that'll look great. Right. I mean, whatever. Um, how much, what percentage better is horizon zero dawn? If it's got better graphics and more, you know, and, and, and conversation mocap, like what, When we, when we spread this out, when we split this out to the most mainstream, the full audience for the PlayStation 5, the mainstream, the casual audience, whatever you want to call it, how many of those people are even going to fucking know? Like, you, you end up in a situation where you're like, oh yeah, my parents had the cable box plugged into the wrong port on the TV and didn't have any of the HD shit enabled and they never knew. Like, you run into those sorts of situations where people are just like, oh, I don't know, I thought it looked good, whatever. Oh, that was a PS4 game? Weird. I didn't even know. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just fucking weird. Um, Sony's got stuff for next year, you know, maybe not a, not maybe not a huge abundance of things, but they do have what they have like Wolverine. Um there's Death Stranding too. Uh Until Dawn is coming out in a little bit here. Um yeah, I mean, Naughty Dog is working away on something, presumably. Uh, but that's not going to ship on this console, is it? It'll, it'll, it'll be a launch game for the new thing, right? Who knows? Um, but yeah, you know, not a, not a huge... Uh, out of first party, I mean, you know, like there's some good looking, cool third party stuff here and and that's that's cool. They can always find that. There's always someone out there doing neat stuff. But uh But yeah, I I don't know, man. Like that's just such a weird uh, such a weird slate that they've got right now and the stuff that they announced here you're like, "Oh, okay. This is like first party just looks fucking weird right now." But again, you know, they thought that they would have a competitive multiplayer shooter on the market that people would be excited about. Or some, I mean, someone there did someone there must have. Right. Uh, and then that didn't work out. So in a world where conquered is a, is a good game, uh, or a successful game, that would be a really interesting one, two punch from them. Right. To have Astrobot and Conquered uh, hitting around the same time, you'd be like, "Oh, huh? Wow these are these are two games that are very unlike what the the modern Sony that we always joke about." That's cool, uh, but it didn't it did not go down that way. So here we are. Um, yeah, has, has, that's a good. Has, has has Naughty Dog released an original PS5 game? No, no, yeah. No, they didn't. But you know, that's all. Uh, th those are going to be the sort of stories that we look back on, and you know, COVID ends up being a contributor to things like that happening, and um, you know, it's just the the kind of long list of weird things that have happened over the last handful of years in video games, you know, and uh. And, and it, I, yeah, so I, I guess I, I don't necessarily think it'll be weird 
if Naughty Dog doesn't ship anything on the PS5, anything brand new. Um, if they just hold it back and, you know, save something for PlayStation 6, I would go like, yeah, okay, I guess that makes sense. But yeah, you know, they were working on the faction stuff, the multiplayer thing. And then, you know, obviously that got yoinked. Uh, and that got yeeted, that got thrown in the bammer, whatever we want to, whatever the technical term is. Um, and so, you know, they probably spent a good long time trying to figure that out, trying to crack that nut and figure out what a multiplayer game like that was going to be. And uh, ultimately walked away from it. I think, again, like I was saying on the podcast today, I think that's the right move. If they were not married to it conceptually, then the, the, it probably was the right move to walk away. Because then, you, you know, you don't want Naughty Dog to suddenly be wrapped up in a live service game for the next five to seven years and the things they would have to do. You know, it's just, it wouldn't make sense. It's not their forte. Um, but yeah, you know, hey, uh, things happen. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it's, it's fine, I guess, right? I mean, unless you're... Unless you only own a PlayStation and you're you're feeling the but whatever. If you only own a PlayStation, there's a ton of third party games coming out all the time too. Pal World just came out today. Someone's very excited about that. That's that's cool, right? Uh, it's easy to forget that sometimes. Um, and Monster Hunter Wilds continues to look awesome. You know, like whatever stuff. There's there's stuff coming. There's stuff out recently. You know, like it's 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 easy to get bogged down. I think in the the nitty gritty of the platform holders, I think, is is the kind of specific fucking. If you want to uncover where the weird vibes are coming from, I think it is just straight up first party. I think it is Sony. I think it is Microsoft. Nintendo, not so much, but they just Nintendo is just weird vibes all over the place all the time for the last twenty years. But I think that that is why everything feels weird is because the software lineups coming out of the first parties have just not been there the right way, you know? And there's been some weird third party stuff that's happened along the way and games get pushed and whatever. And you know, this game didn't ship and this game ship broken, you know, like, like shit happens. Right. But generally speaking, there's kind of always been just enough games coming at any given time, whether it's perennials and the kind of annuals and, you know, whether it's, you know, your Maddens and your call of duties and your WWE two K's and, and all of that shit that has mostly stayed on track. And as much as I think the WWE games are shit, I mean, people like them. They review well. I think it's because people are fucking dumb and people are willing to settle for a bad wrestling game. They don't, they've been, they've been hurt for so many years that they don't know what good games look like anymore. And so they're like, WW2K is amazing. This is a, an incredible video game. I love that, you know, um, it plays so well. It's just so good. Um, but, but, you know, what are you comparing it to? Like the dog shit that's been released for the fucking 10 years before that? Like, yeah, it's way better than that fucking shit. For sure. But, uh, but hey, um, I don't know. Yeah, people seem kind of mad about Madden in, in, in a variety of ways now. Like Madden's definitely got this stink on it over these last few years. Um, like there's just a rotating sports game at EA that is just always in the shit house with its fan base. Sometimes it's all of them to varying degrees, but it's always at least one. The knob seems like it is very much turned to Madden right now. Um, but, uh, you know, all of that stuff still kind of happens and, and, you know, it is, it is what it is. The, the variance year to year is not always dramatic, but that's not always a bad thing. Uh, and of course there are plenty of small teams and smaller studios out there making killer weird shit all the time too. So, you know, it's like I, overall, when you look at the industry, it's like, you know, when you, it, it's easy to wake up every morning and be like, Oh, another batch of fucking layoffs. Like this is a fucking disaster. And you look at it and you're like, yeah, in a lot of ways, there are parts of this industry that are an absolute disaster. But I think there's just a lot of stuff that is going to get shook out one way or the other, you know, and it, and it kind of needs it. And, um, I think everyone's going to figure out 
that they don't need to keep. Like, every, like more and more studios are going to figure out that they're not going to make that Fortnite money. They're just not. And they're going to stop taking the big swings uh, and, and failing miserably with online games and, and what have you. And, you know, they'll... Uh, they'll stop chasing waterfalls. As they say. Stick to them dicks and balls you used to. I think that's how that goes. Um... And I think that that'll, you know, you'll, you'll have some kind of corrections along those lines, right? Where, you know, everyone decided they wanted to fucking try to chase that shit. And it makes sense because if you hit, you hit forever or you, or it, it changes your studio for the rest of your fucking life and, and all of that shit. And you go like, oh yeah, you understand why people take those big swings, especially if they've got like big ideas and think that they've found a, a new path and, and something unique that will fit in to the landscape. But I think, you know, as we've had these more high profile conquered, you know, if it's not seen as a tipping point, it'll be, it'll be one of those massive signposts that people look at and go like, Oh, we should have, we should have probably taken more of a look at that situation before investing hell of money into making another one of the, you know, and, and, but you, you suicide squads, another good example. I think you'd even go back as far as like Avengers and, and just go like, hey, man, you know, we don't necessarily. We don't need to make a game that people are going to play for five years. Instead, we should be making a game that people are going to play for two years. And then they should buy the next one. Um, and try to go that way. I mean, even just if more if more studios kind of went the Call of Duty route, maybe not annual, but like biannual you know try it every, every few years whatever it is to say like hey yeah no in, instead of just trying to make a thing that we're gonna fucking sell you once and you're gonna play forever we're gonna go back to annual releases we're gonna go back you know give people a jumping on point and a jumping off point right it's kind of the nice thing about call of duty um is that you've always got a point where you can go like, all right, I'm done with this. Right. And, and I'm not, I'm not interested in the next one. So I'm going to play something else this year or, or whatever. I'm going to look for a different, a different thing in this vein and, and check it out. Um, yeah, I don't know, man, we'll see. I think there's a lot of different ways things could go from here, but uh, but yeah, at the same time, yeah, you look exactly, you look at it and go like, man, they're making a fucking Yakuza pirate game and you know, they're making this Indiana Jones game. Like, you know, there's just, there is still a fair amount of just like regular ass meat and potatoes ass fucking single player ass video games that exist. And you know, it's, it's not all doom and gloom on that front. I think people get wrapped up like everyone just makes live service games and blah, 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 even though people don't seem to understand what the fuck a live service game is anymore. And it's like anything with a server connection, people are just mad at, which just seems like so backwards. Like, are you, are you just like the dude sitting on a lawn chair going like, when games came on cartridges, they didn't have to get patches. They go hang out with Tommy Tallarico, go get an Amico. That's the platform for you. At that point, man. Um, like, the internet exists. It's cool when games take advantage of it in fun ways. It has been for decades. You know, it's a cool game, Fantasy Star Online. You know what would have been cooler about the first Fantasy Star Online? If they had an ability to update it with content that didn't have to fit on a VMU. Though it's kind of cool that that was what they were limited to because it led to just like, I don't know, man, a, a, a mag shaped like the Yahoo logo. You know, like all the fucking insane shit that had to happen because of that um, was interesting in its day for sure. Um, but what if instead of them selling you PSO episode two, which added one bad episode to the game, that was just something that came to the game. And it had it now. And you're like, oh, hmm. 
that probably would have felt a little more interesting than it did, but I don't know. It's just not a one size fits all kind of argument. And I think that people are, you know, when, when people lash out at the whole live service thing, they oftentimes come off like, I don't know, almost Luddites or something. You know, it's just like this, this thing of just like, like I said, you seem like you should be somewhere talking about how patches are ruining video games. And then back in my day, we put the cartridge in the Nintendo and it worked. And if it didn't, we had to pull out the cartridge and blow on it. God damn it. You know, like you just sound like you should be whittling somewhere. And uh, more power to you. Go whittle, I guess. There's nothing wrong with it, but come on. Anyway, that's the PlayStation State of Play. Um, an intriguing look at a collection of video games, big and small. Uh, for sure, but um, yeah, I don't know. For I guess you know, hey, we'll see what comes out of TGS, right? We'll we'll see what comes out of the Tokyo Game Show, and uh, if there's going to be any new announcements there, or if this was kind of the, hey, here's the bulk of the stuff that's going to be shown there. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Or the bulk of, I mean, you know, like it's like Sony's probably going to have much more other than, other than whatever the Death Stranding 2 panel ends up being. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to watch that. I'm, I'm happy to read notes on that and maybe go watch a trailer if they put a trailer out. But, I, but I'm, I'm cool on that. So, yeah, everybody have a good one. And I will see you next time.